Hello and welcome to the W.B. Mason Coaches Report on GoHofter.com. Joined as always by the head coach of the Hofstra baseball team, John Russo. Coach, welcome. Hey, thanks a lot for having me. This is a happy show coming off a three-game sweep of College of Charleston, who had entered the weekend as the first place team in the CAA. So let's just look back on this past weekend. Your overall assessment on the team performance from Friday through Sunday. You know, I think, um, you know, the theme for me started on Wednesday getting beat up by St. John's and, you know, arguably just didn't play good at all. And afterwards talked about, hey, we've lost six in a row or whatever it was. We, we need to play better and we just need to get tougher and got some toughness to us. And, you know, I think um, people mistake toughness for physicality. You don't need physicality. You need, you know, spirit. It has to come from inward in tough spots. And, you know, I think it started right on the mound with Rooney coming out. Um, you know, giving up a run there in the first inning that was unearned, and he took it like a man and just continued to pitch really, really well. And then, um, you know, you have Austin who um, has uh, two errors and cost the run in the first inning, and then he comes up with a big hit to knock in two RBIs. That's toughness. And then you have, uh, you know, Stephen Foster standing out in the middle of the field when people are on his teammates and, you know, exemplifying toughness of, hey, we're, it's our field, we're, we're going to be here. Uh, you have Vito Frisha, you know, uh, really struggling in conference and uh, struggling overall and has a big weekend when we need it and, you know, gave us a really big presence in the lineup. Um, you know, you get the Matt Weishire on Saturday, you know, comes back six uh, innings of, you know, just tough baseball and, and pitching and Chris Weiss getting out of the jams uh, on Saturday and, and toughness. And then you just get the, you know, Michael James gives us three innings to start on Sunday where he hasn't started all year and we needed innings to shorten the game for Teddy. And without those three innings, we, we probably don't get the response that we want. And, and then they have Teddy finish out six innings and hitting still after he's played. That, that's toughness. And then, you know, finished off with Robert Weishire, um, uh, you know, hitting the home run. And, you know, another guy that I thought had a great weekend, Mikey Reasoner. You know, he... Um, you know, has really struggled in conference. It isn't hidden. Mikey knows it, but he's working really hard and getting after it. And uh, uh, you know, had a good weekend and, and what we needed. And uh, you know, you have Daniel Page who hasn't didn't have a great weekend offensively, but defensively was incredible this weekend. And just the overall theme. I'm sure I'm missing some guys, and I apologize to whoever I'm missing. But just toughness. We, we were tough this weekend and tough to beat. You said it all started on the mound with Rooney on Friday night. What else? You know, what can we say about John's performance this year? Like I said, gives up an unearned run, goes the rest of the way, gives up five hits, four of them were singles, but wasn't, didn't give up an extra base hit until the ninth inning, seven strikeouts. You know, arguably, you know, each week he keeps adding to his resume. And then Matt Weishire follows six and a third innings, shut up ball. You know, this guy, Matt Weishire is probably, might be the best story in, in college baseball. Agreed. You know, all the stories we've talked about John Rooney, but Matt Weishire, from where he started to where he's finishing his career, may be the best story in, co in college baseball. I mean, he pitched an absolute gem. And then, like you said, Chris Weiss comes in, was cruising along, got into a little bit of trouble in the ninth, and then gets out of a bases loaded jam, no outs, just, give up the one, just gives up the one run. You know, that looked like the Chris Weiss of old, the Chris Weiss that we've seen most of this season with a few hiccups here and there, but that was vintage Chris Weiss. And then, as you said yesterday, between Michael James and Teddy Sillis, and then Teddy, you know, gets his first win in, in almost <laughs> two years, which was a huge monkey on on everybody's back. Agreed. And definitely, I know wins are overrated stat because Teddy's obviously pitched well enough. But you know, I know talking to him after the game, he was relieved. You know, it's something I think they great on on everybody, and you know, it, it's good to get it out of the way. And it was a good, you know, strategic move to bring him out of the pen and help alleviate some of that pressure of starting. Overall, though, the series, I mean, really, on both sides, the pitching just dominant in, in Bonn, really, on both sides. You know, Hofstra, you know, a few big innings, two big innings on Friday, and then really the one big inning on, on Sunday. So what have you seen in baseball overall in the CAA that has, why the pitching has so, been so ahead of the hitting this year? You know, uh, let's take Rooney, for example. Rooney went nine innings on Friday, and I think it's easy to look at his, um, you know, bottom line, say nine innings, no runs, whatever. But, you know, he's 92 on his last fastball a game, and, and, and that's 114 pitches in. That doesn't happen by accident. That happens by all the hard work that they do in the offseason, working out, running, 
conditioning, staying in tune with their body. Everybody gets to see the final thing, you know, result and what the numbers are, but they don't get to see the hard work that, that John and the pitching staff do all the time. Everybody, Matt Weishire is another great, you know, he, he's transformed his whole body in the last, you know, two and a half years and uh, has stamina and want to. And, um, you know, I think with changing his body and everything, it changed his uh, mentality and it's put confidence in himself and Teddy being able to pitch on Sunday. You know, the one I thought got lost is Chris Weiss went two and two thirds of max effort every pitch of the game. I mean, because he was in trouble in there in the seventh, he made himself a little bit of trouble in the eighth, he had a guy on third, and then bases loaded no out in the ninth, and you know, I don't even know how he did that for two and thirds, I and mean, it just, it tells you how strong and how good a shape and how great of a work ethic uh, the pitching staff has. and. You know, I think that that's the one thing the juniors or sophomores or freshmen can see, but they can see how much their leaders uh, work and the effort. Michael James is another guy, you know, he uh, gets three innings when he hasn't done it, but he's in phenomenal shape and changed his body in the last year, added muscle, added toughness. And, um, you know, I, I thought in the whole weekend, we only lost our mind for about one out there in the ninth inning on Saturday where we got a little bit flustered when they loaded the bases, but then you know, a big sacrifice fly, and I, I told them when I visited them, we'll trade a run for an out right now. Right now, that's all we need, and then Chris can wiggle his way out, and then he got the sacrifice fly, and able to get a strikeout, and then, you know, what an incredible play by Rob Weishire to end the, the, the game, and you know, he finished off, you know, two games in a row for us. And we talked about, you mentioned Vito Frisch's big week. The big week earned him CAA Player of the Week, which just came out a little while ago. So congratulations to Vito on that. This obviously, you know, a huge part of the lineup, but down the stretch run here with three conference series left, fighting for a playoff spot, how important is Vito Frisia in the middle of the Hofstra order? Well, listen, I, I think we all agree Vito is one of the best hitters in the CIA, and we'll agree that he had struggled up until this past week, but I said it in an interview earlier, and I'll, I'll say it again. I just thought he got away of his way a little bit in his head, and um, but, you know, I couldn't have seen a more confident kid uh, walking around in the dugout and listen he changes the whole premise of the lineup when he gets going hot and you know you know he had an intentional walk then you're walking him to face you know Teddy Siller Teddy Sillis who was a player of the week two weeks ago and then you see Mikey get hot but he's batting in front of Vito now and now he's getting more pitches to hit and he's getting some fastballs and then he's gone then you got Steven in front of him Steven put gets on base he puts pressure and then you have to pitch to Vito and then I moved Austin to five. It seemed that to really work out, it lengthened our lineup a little bit. And then Rob six got going. And you know, if we can get the seven, eight, nine going, our lineup will be really strong here ending out the season. But Vito changes the whole composition of our lineup when he's going hot because people know where he's at and they have to focus on him. And you know, he's just got such a great presence. He's such a great kid. Um, really happy for the award always. But um, you know, I, I think he would tell you he would trade three wins over a Player of the Week uh, award every day. And so nobody's happier and uh, wants Hofstra to do well than Vito Frusia. Now, busy week this week. No really time to rest on the on the laurels of winning this series. Tomorrow night at Manhattan. And then this weekend, the last conference road series down at William & Mary, which is always a tough place to play. What are your goals and, and thoughts for this coming week? You know, we got to play better midweek. We, we've been an awful midweek team so far this year, and, and Manhattan's already put a whooping on us at home. So, you know, uh, Seamus will get the start tomorrow uh, playing Manhattan away. And to be honest, we just got to play better baseball. we, we got to get better pitching. We haven't pitched really well in the midweek, but we haven't been offensively great either. Um, but then our bigger focus will turn to William Mary. And, you know, my big sell to everyone, the team, people I talk to is, uh, listen, I started working on William Mary today. And, um, they might be in last place. They might have three wins, 12 losses, but I'll tell you what, they, they gave Northeastern three tough uh, one-run games this weekend at Northeastern, who's now in first place. They lost uh, three one other one-run games, so that's six of their 12 losses are by a run. Uh, then you add in three other two-run losses. I mean, they're really close to being the first place team in the CAA. And we're going to William Mary, where, you know, I haven't had much success uh, going down there to play, so, you know, uh, I'm going to be working really hard on convincing Hofstra baseball and people that we, we've got to get ready. We've got another battle, it's CAA weekend, and um, you know, take the pitching and, and you know, people make it easy. Hey, continue the momentum, but we just got to keep playing good baseball. And we played really good baseball this weekend. All right.
You've been watching the W. Mason Coaches Report on GoHawker.com.